Greetings and salutations, viewers. I'm Star Princess HLC, and welcome back to Cupid. When we last left off, we kind of got a bit more into Rose's backstory in this time, where we kind of see her kind of abusive mother's actions firsthand, how she was constantly, like, beating her down, making her feel bad, attacking her for even just looking at a guy, calling her a tramp and everything. Kind of seeing, like, the kind of how Rosa is so low on self-esteem, very difficult with trusting people, and her kind of dealing with that in even this situation where she's not sure if Guillaume is actually the responsible for Catherine's death, but uh, she managed to find his journal, and now we're in the library, hopefully trying to open it and see what is in there. In the warm, dim light of the library, Rosa opened the journal's cover. She wasn't too surprised to find that a number of entries were written in different tongues. The dates jumped from decade to decade. The writing spanned centuries. Another suspicion validated. Gyame was not human. Or at least, he did not have a normal human lifespan. This discovery made Rosa search her mind for her date of birth. It distressed her that she could not remember. She shook her head and turned back to the journal. Despite the multitude of languages, the first entry was translated into several languages. For sentimental reasons, perhaps? Or maybe a feeble attempt at reminiscing a more innocent time. I am learning to write. Elia gave me paper. I like Elia. She wants me to call her mother. She smells like oranges. She says I am a gift from the goddess. But I don't know any goddess. Elia calls me Ray. I guess that is my name now. It's nice to have a name. The other preceding pages were still in a different language. Rosa flipped through the pages until she came upon one she could read. They call me Eros, a, go a god, a divine. They don't understand what I am. They either build me statues or spit at my feet. I am a muse. I am a blight, a symbol. But I am not the answer. It seems ironic, isn't it, that love craves love above all? That which I need, that which I am, poisons me to the point that I am sick of its taste. 6 of May. I see it in the way people look at me, the way they act around me. Some would, of course, think of me as blessed. I have youth, health, and the gift of being loved. But I found out that these gifts are curses as well. My youth forces me to always wander. My looks guarantee that I will always stand out. And love? The very same urge that blesses me quickly turns rabid. Yet I understand why. Oh, love, we all crave it, don't we? In the end, we are all drunk on the idea that only love could heal our, dark, our brokenness. They all think I am this cure, but I keep hoping there might be something else, despite this twisted sentiment. There must be. Mustn't there? I would say so, because again, it brings up the point of people think that if they have love, if they have, like they're in a relationship or something, that their life is complete, but that's, that's not the case. Rosa read the words and found them tugging at her heart. This was the same feeling she had had for years. It almost seemed like the words were her own. I know I'm not surprised to be supposed to be writing this. God forgive me. I do not want to write it down. If I do, it will be the truth. Oh Lord, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do it. I just wanted to stop hurting. I'm hiding now. I slashed my face and cut my hair so they would not recognize me. Pain. Pain is good. A penance. Oh Lord, please. If there is a God listening, please strike me down. Bad memories began to surface in Rose's mind. Desperation. A cornered animal that fought back. It reminded her of her own sins. Her hands were drenched in red, and yet here she was, planning to kill another man. This had been her goal all along, hadn't it? That same familiar guilt began to stir in her mind. She bit her lip. Rosa skipped some entries. Most of them were garbled, almost incomprehensible. They were written in old ink, faded and unloved. Still, though they were melancholic, they painted a picture of a man with sufficient black humor to keep sane. 28th of November. 
The plague has confirmed my suspicion that I won't, I do not die from sickness. I don't know how to feel about that. Everywhere, everyone is dead, but on the bright side, everyone is dead. 7th of June, 1489. So he has lived a long time. For decades, I have searched for something in this life, and I am always disappointed by transience. What am I looking for? Meaning? Hope? Love? Death, maybe? I can bleed. Wounds to the heart heal slower than the rest of my body. I think I may die if I wounded the enough. If wounded enough. I've tried that. There was a time when seeing someone... Uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I don't know where that came from. There was a time when seeing myself bleed was the only reminder that I am not numb. Yet my body does not form scars, no matter how many times I draw my knife. Like any sign of age or ugliness, they all fade. A wrinkle today, gone the next. And if my body isn't even my own to brand, that is a shame. I want to mar my body so badly that anyone who sees me will flee. But I've tried that too. People are crueler when you are ugly. Why is that? Why do they feel the need to punish you simply because you are detestable? Perhaps they can, or perhaps because it is easy to be cruel and to those which do not belong. I don't belong. It would be nice to disappear one day. There it is. There is confirmation that he can be killed. So he bleeds like everyone else, but heals enough not to die. A strike to the heart. If we find a way to leave this wound open, perhaps he can be exterminated. Rosa continued reading. That probably was in my mother's voice, but I totally forgot. Another feeling was starting to grow in her chest. She began to question her cause the more she read through the journal. I have been staying in the old March farm. They are good people. They invited me to eat with them, and it was in the warmth of their fire that I knew that I must leave. I will only destroy their happiness. For the briefest of moments, I was able to experience what it is like to be part of a family. Not an outsider, but accepted. Little Sissy has taken a liking to me, though. Children are curious creatures. They are a constant reminder to humans of their own impending death, their own weakness and mortality. Yet people keep making them. One may wonder why, but it is not difficult to understand. It is the tantalizing thought, the hope, that no matter your past mistakes, you were able to make something pure at one point. Watch it grow. Watch it live. Such a poor thing, looking up to you for love and care, it is both power and vulnerability, both selfish and selfless. A curious thing, indeed. Hmm. Interesting points. Rosa shuffled through more pages and saw a different penmanship in one such entry. It caught her eye. January 1500. New century. I like it. I smell change in the air. It is so much easier to lie when you have the means. Trading is a good sport. My name nowadays is Baron Eric Dobshire. How could I have forgotten mankind's paralyzing obsession with titles? Names have power. Titles have power. I simply bought a horse and good robes and introduced myself as such. Everyone fawned over it. Yeah, idol worship at its best, I guess. It's like, ooh, they have money, and they are look, look handsome. That I must try to shag them. I could get used to this. The taste is refreshing. I must plan this better next time. A background, a story. People love stories. Maybe I shall be an actor next. 27th March, 1507. Cretans everywhere. Human nature stays the same. The powerful will take advantage of the damned. So, it is all a struggle for control. Is that all there is? I have thought it would be different, somehow, in a learned class in a different era. What was I expecting? Fortunately, I am already well acquainted. The next entry's penmanship was scratchy and difficult to understand. 1st November, 1550. I am tired of this life. It is all an endless cycle, and I can't stand the taste of this any longer. Love turns to ash in my mouth. I am trying to stop. I want to stop. It is my seventh day without consuming anything other than normal food. It barely grazes the bottom of my stomach. I want to see if I will die without eating love. I am sick of this. 
So he eats love. He's kind of like a demon who feeds on people's love, it seems. Interesting. Either that or somehow this is tie-in with lie eats and... You know, the little dragon who eats lies is a relative of some kind. I don't know. Now you know what he is, Rosa. He consumes love. I do not know exactly what he is, but he is a monster. A demon. Didn't I tell you I felt it in my bones? Eh, I guess I'll read more. Perhaps there might be more. Because I can easily miss something. 4th December, 1550. This is my 10th day without it, and I am still alive. Barely. I can't even see where I am writing anymore. I am so weak. My body is in pain. Am I dying? I am afraid. After all my whining, I still want life? Isn't that funny? I am sleeping again. Sleep is the only thing that sustains me. It is dangerous for me to linger in sleep's domain, especially when I have not eaten. I have to keep writing. It's the only way to tell my mind is still my own. Maybe I should find something. I can't take it anymore. So that was why he fell so easily for the sedatives. That is not all. Perhaps we could destroy him this way as well. He is most vulnerable right now. If we attack now, he won't be able to put up any defenses. 12th of February, 1601. I have written all my entries into a new journal. I have kept some that were close to my heart. I don't know why I still keep writing. Perhaps this journal is my will to live. I look back on it and it reminds me of the years I have endured. Sometimes I have a suspicion that this, that this is my only reason. This perverse obsessive compulsion to hoard time, years, names. It can't end because it's such a shame. It is almost time to leave again. 19th of August, 1605. My ship arrived in France today. I plan to settle in a smaller town. I am sick of the taste of instant gratification. Maybe I will try a different approach next time. I need to blend in with the citizens first. My French needs work. 29th of June, 1724. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I shouldn't care so much. It always ends up broken or destroyed. I never learn. I should leave before... The entry was not finished, and some fresh pages were torn out of the book. Even if there were no names mentioned, Rosa felt that the last entry was for Catherine. There were more entries that she didn't explore, but she decided to close the book. She had read enough for now. Rosa's hands were shaking by then. A growing feeling of understanding came over her. His thoughts were too much like her own. They were too similar. Kiyame consumes love. Rosa remembered the taste in her mouth when she had kissed Catherine. There was something else in that kiss. A boundless flavor that coated her mouth and made her realize how hungry she was. The same night that Catherine began to change. Rosa's throat throbbed. The thumping felt like it resonated through her whole body. Rosa fell to her knees. That same feeling of dread began to rise up in her throat. The mere mention of the thought seemed to summon the feeling in her chest. She gagged. Did I taste Catherine's love that night? Then that means that I am also... Mother, am I the same? She hastily pulled out the locket that Guillaume had given her previously. It was still as difficult to open as before, for right now Rosa was armed with a terrifying conclusion. She struggled with the damn thing until she thought her nails would peel off her fingers. The pendant popped open, revealing a yellowing portrait inside. Oh, finally figured it out, have you? Do you see it now? Do you see why Mother wants his punishment? My child, he is a monster. The very thing I stopped you from becoming. Don't you see? I saved you. I stopped you from feeding on other people's love. I didn't want you to be filthy. Mother's love is all you need. You have learned enough. Now you know what to do. Kill him. He is what I have feared the most, Rosa. He must perish. Rosa's face contorted into worry. The discovery of Gammy's identity shook her to the, her core, but also made her feel the burden of her, their years together. 
Perhaps the understanding of his pain as well. Must we really do this, Mother? You still have doubts after everything you've learned. No. But the knowledge just makes me want to... You stupid child. Can't you see it is what should be done? Uh, do it for me? I don't know. Uh, you must do it for me, for my peace. Is it really? It is easy to say that, but what do you really want? Are you really this deaf child? His, he devours the minds of those that love him. I cannot think of a more disgusting creature. We must destroy him. It needs to be done. He needs to pay for the victims of his curse. But is it really the right thing? Is death the only way to change him? Uh, yes it is. Of course it is. There is no other choice. It's the only way to stop him. He is a monster. Besides, it is what he deserves. Am I not like him, Mother? I am also a monster. We are the same. Uh. Yes, you are? Yes, you are, and it's part of my regret that I ever, have ever loved you. But that is why I am here. To keep you from becoming the monster he is. Now that you know his true face, there's only one thing to do. Kill him. Rosa bit her lip until she could could taste blood. But mother, please, don't make me kill anyone again. I am scared. What is the matter? Haven't you done it before? That was an accident. No, it is necessary. An accident or not, your hands are already dirty. What's a little more blood to you? That's not true. I... This isn't right. I can't kill another person, mother. Yes, you can. You must. To fulfill your goal, it is necessary to crush things along the way. Just remember that they don't matter. It is just you and I forever, darling. Trust no one. Love no one but me. The rest of the world can crumble to dust. You have thought about punishing him too, haven't you? What? No. How dare he put you on the sidelines? Are you not good enough to love? Am I not fetching enough? Am I not pretty enough? Why didn't you feed on me instead? No. It bothers you, doesn't it? How could you want Catherine and not me? I'm better than her. She doesn't understand you the way I do. You, you are the only one I've wanted this much. Why won't you desire me? Everyone does. Why not you? Stop. And just when my heart turns to Catherine, you take her away? Bastard. You took my heart. You took Catherine's. You... I hate you. You shouldn't be allowed to exist. The very thought of him confuses you. Catherine and him, they are both the forbidden fruit that you crave so badly. Mother keeps you right, darling. Mother keeps you clean. If you kill the dirty man, then you will stay pure. No, you don't have to be confused. But... So you are more willing to face my wrath than rather than obey, is that it? What is it that you do not understand? He cannot live. You have read his journal. He is a vile, filthy insect. He has to perish. But it shouldn't be up to me to decide. It's not how it's supposed to... You are such a little monster. Selfish, inconsiderate, ingrate. Tears formed in Rose's eye. She grabbed her head and scratched viciously. No, I don't understand anymore. I am so confused. Please, Mother. Stop your amusing. You are not amusing me. Do you want to keep my presence with you? Do you still want my memory to stay? Of course, Mother. Please don't leave me. Do you love me, my daughter? Yes. Then do as I say, my child. Kill him. Rosa began to giggle. Her tongue danced in her mouth. She licked her lips in delight. Yes. Kill him. This is what he deserves for being filthy. I'm a little monster too, aren't I? 
but Mother kept me clean. She feeds me and loves me and kisses me. I'd like to cut his pretty neck open, Mother. Watch the pretty blood drain from his dirty mouth. Is that all right? I am a monster, but Mother keeps me right. Mother, can I please play with him a little bit? Pretty please. I want to do naughty things to him. She laughed. I want to enjoy his punishment. I hate him. I love him. Now I understand why. Rosa tittered again. I will kill him, Mother. For all his sins, he deserves to die. For a moment, Rosa was shocked by the gravity of her own words. But Mother's voice came to soothe her. That's my darling girl. Make sure you make him suffer for as long as possible. All the pain in the world wouldn't be enough to punish him for the damage he's caused. There is no doubt about that. Regardless of who Gammy was, whether he was a saint or devil, killing him was the right thing to do. Yes, mummy dear, I will follow everything you say. But I get to have fun too, right? Rosa lit arrows bathing her face in the scarlet light cast by the candle. The night went on. The spell buried Kiyame into a deeper slumber. She brought out a gigantic carving knife. She snuck out of the kitchen. It was almost as long as her forearm. It had been sharpened enough to tear meat from bone. She played with the shiny thing while whistling a lullaby. Sleep now, my precious gilly. Dream of me. Dream and descend into the depths of your personal hell. I hope you like your gift. Rosa giggled while picking, pricking the tip of her tongue with a sharp knife. Let me deliver your atonement. Okay, that was weird. What in me is dark? No light, but rather darkness visible. But that is not me. What is in me is not me. I have fought with it, lived with it, and survived. Yet we become what we subdue. If that is true, then I was never myself. I am not a monster. Then what are you? Tired. Um, somewhat irritable? That too. I somehow prefer this side of you. Makes me wonder why I'm so stern with you. Why I care so much for your well-being. Why did I even offer you to stay with me? I do not know. You are still so generous, even if you are like this. I give because I can take. Once upon a time, there lives a man, lived, who lost his heart. So he ate others. He who makes a beast himself gets rid of the pain and- Oh, come on! I was reading that! I never lost it. I've always been cursed without it. Oh, wait, I can go back quickly, right? Oh, nope. Then take mine. Yours? Do you love me? I think you do. Do you know how long I've traveled to find you? How far I've searched? And now you're here. Finally. My heart yearns for you, Guillaume. I love you. Stop. Nectar flows from the spring of the rose. In eminence and obstacle finds not a membrane, joint, or limb exclusive bars. Touch me, Game. My body wants you. My eyes fly open from the groggy mist of confusion. My body is bound in a force that imprisoned my limbs. Chains. The smell of your skin saturates my nose. Sweat. My whole body is tense. Flesh. You walk up to me. You put a finger on my lips and trace it down my neck. Goosebumps break on my skin. You're beautiful. I have noticed before. I knew you were before you even did. But you were pure. Pure. The taste of your love was on ripe fruit. Instead, I thought of you as something I'd like to protect. Why is that? Your hair flows out like a river as it brushes against my skin. You reach your hand to me and my stomach curls. There is a tainted power radiating from you that makes me gag. Like sugar dissolved in water. Like a full belly on the brink of death, or sick. I don't know why I said death. I thought I had forgotten this feeling. I am afraid. You move closer to me, and I startle back. Everything in dreams is slower. You claim my mouth with yours. It tastes just like honey. 
Spit ropes between our lips, and I feel weaker the more I linger in this dream. A trap. Rosa, what are you doing? Stop this. You giggle. No. You open your mouth and kiss me again. My energy drains from me. I pull my face away. Stop. I don't want this. And yet you want me. Your body agrees. No. You want me too, don't you? Stop it, Rosa. You don't know what you're doing. See, you do love me. You want to protect me. You treat me differently. I've always kept my distance from you. You're always hovering at the edge of my vision. The air is heavy with magic. I will myself to move, but my mind is torn to pieces at the spell. Imaginary hands touch my body and pinch at my flesh. They pull me down and hold me in place. I must escape. I can't move from this dastardly prison. What does it feel like to be helpless? Have you forgotten what it feels like to be a victim? To be weak? Whoa! Freaky. Your face begins to change. Is that Rosa or is that Guillaume? I think that's Rosa. But... Ooh, that's freaky. You are Rosa. You are Catherine. You are Marcus. You are Diomedes. You are Psyche. Your head begins to snap and distort. Uh, sh that is really creepy. I'm just saying. The skin bubbles and the flesh tears reveal the pulsing hide of the monster inside. Your glistening heart pumps in your chest. The face grins and its eyes focus on me. Yet, I'm not afraid of this thing and its many mouths, including a very particular one. Like, I I'm not making that up. That that looks like um, that 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 looks like a mouth vagina, with teeth. You are merely holding a mirror up to me. I gasp and struggle, but your hands clamp around my neck. One of your tongues licks at the side of my belly as if sampling the food before the course. You are nothing but a parasite, you see. The other face contorts into a grin. How did you ever think you were powerful? Look at you squirm. You are an insect. It is time for me to swat you. To make you pay for all you have done. Who are you really, Rosa? You smile at my helplessness. The smile breaks your cheek and splits your face in two. Your mouth reveals a gaping hole. Rosa, why are you doing this? Why? Because you are filthy. You eat and you eat. I hate you. You won't even look at me. Do I have your attention now? Well, it's too late. You had your chance. Now it is my turn to feed on you. Like Mother said, it is a fitting payment for your crimes. My eyes widen at your words as the realization strikes my senses. What did you say? You are. But oh, I forgive you even if Mother can't. I love you that much. Shut up. I do. Don't you believe me? I struggle with the chains in my mind. Look at you fighting me so hard. If you just relax, it will all be over soon. My teeth grit with anger. Too many times I have heard the same revolting words, all convincing me to accept my fate lying down, eyes closed. It will be over soon. Anger rips apart my chest. Open your mouth. Smile for me. Silence. And after all that, they have the gall to tell me what I'm supposed to feel. Little boys aren't supposed to cry. Why do you refuse a lady? Doesn't it feel good? Just relax and enjoy it. It will be over soon. Not soon enough. Men and women, they are all rabid for desire. They are disgusting. I will not be anyone's toy ever again. I will not be a piece of meat. How dare you humiliate me, you wretched little witch. I rattle the bounds of my cage and it makes you flinch. You don't notice a part of its splinter. I bare my teeth at you. I will never forgive you. Why are you so cross with me? Don't you see I'm doing this for you? Shut your mouth. The creature doesn't stop. It continues to feed on my life. It drools over me with ecstasy. It is never, ever gentle. It grasps my neck and suffocates me as it nears its peak. Yes, mine, you're mine. I struggle out of the creature's grip. I can feel my body weaken and tense at the same time. I concentrate on breaking the spell that holds me in place, but it is hard to escape. My consciousness is frail and almost out of my grip. My lungs cry for air. Terror mounts inside me as I feel my life drain away. Perhaps I should stop struggling. Perhaps let the monster take me. I am so tired. 
so tired of fighting. You poor thing. The momentary lapse on the creature's hold lets loose a part, a, a part of my mind. Jeez, this is going on forever. I mean, I know it's a visual novel, but jeez, they are really going in on the whole fact that he is probably going to die. I gather all my remaining strength and push back at the crack I made a while ago. Ooh. The spell shatters, and I break free. I do not give the creature a chance to think. I jab my hand into its chest. Momentarily winded and stunned, I hit it again. It falls to its knees. The spell on me weakens. I feel power returning to my body. And yet the creature laughs, the sound resonating from around me. I am not going to die here. I have sacrificed far too much to perish. The creature's laughter jeers at me. For what? I grasp its neck and watch it choke, relishing the control back in my veins. Yet the creature still laughs. I am not to be mocked, you filthy thing. I am powerful, and I will endure. I have played this game for centuries, and I will not be beaten at my own device. The creature caresses my hand, choking its throat. This, you enjoyed it too, didn't you? I did it all for you. My anger increases the power in my hands. Its mouth titters as I snap its neck. I love you. Gammy woke up from the dream, weak and shaking. <laughs> what dream gone bad indeed, thank you, achievement. Interesting. I stood up from the bed and his vision floundered. He fell onto the floor, losing balance from the sudden frailty of his legs. The churning in his stomach wouldn't go away. Her breath was shallow and tasted like sick. He closed his eyes. He laid on the floor for a little while, dragging all air into his lungs until the urge to vomit passed. How could darkness still spin without ground? Kiyame's fist balled up in anger. To be degraded into this pathetic state was unforgivable. He felt the fury burning hot in his heart, consuming every thought in his head. He tried to rein it in. It was an unnecessary expulsion of energy at this point. He didn't know how long he had laid there in the dark. But soon his strength came back to him. Pushing himself from the floor, Giamme staggered around his room. He cleaned himself and pushed on, put on fresh clothes. He could still feel tugs of odious power within his stomach. He, he walked to his bedside drawer and looked inside. The old dagger glinted at him with malice. It reminded him of his anger, forged and sharpened over the years. His hatred was distilled in this blade. He gripped the dagger's hilt until red welts formed on his hand. He felt bound by purpose and rage. He could hear her calling out to him. A whisper. A taunt. Kiyome, play with me again, please. You know where to find me. He shivered as his teeth grinded in his mouth. You were paid for this. Kiyome heard voices waft around his ears. Ever since he had woken up from the dream, his vision doubled. He would be walking on the floor one minute, then slipping the next. Kiyome held on to the wall. It seemed that the spell hadn't ended with the dream. He hated the feeling of being powerless. He gripped the dagger, biting his lip to keep himself awake. The domain of sleep was where he was most vulnerable. His attacker must have known this, too. He regained some of his strength, but he was still weakened considerably. Rosa. So she was a witch. How come he had never noticed before? The years had made him soft. Gambe clenched his jaw. Either way, it didn't matter. It was starting to get boring. He would just have to deal with Rosa tonight. Then he would pack his bags and leave for Asia. Gamay smiled despite his nausea. Just you wait, my dear. I'll pay you back for your contempt. He opened the door to Catherine's room. And once Gamay noticed the tinge of red that saturated the room, a blood-red candle shone brightly on the table. The air was heavy with a salty musk of sex, and his vision began to flounder once again. Somehow he felt unprepared. A prickle of fear stained his pride. He was suddenly aware that his anger had led him here without enough of forethought. He, his hand tightened on the dagger. Someone was shifting on the bed, but the room was too dark to see who it was. Giamme stepped closer. He could hear low, rousing moans from the bed. They increased in fervor and excitement as he stepped nearer. Giamme's mouth salivated. A final soft squeal came, and the figure rose from the bed into the light of the candle. Hi, Gilly. And I think with that, that's a good place to leave it off for now. 
I have a feeling the outcome would be different if I chose different options from Mother. So I'll probably be doing that in another one. I do kind of want to continue on with this particular scenario, though. But for now, this is Star Princess HLC saying thank you very much for watching, and have a fond farewell.